deleting Azure resources is an important part of keeping costs down. But there's a trick to ensuring that you get everything and don't leave behind key bits that could be costing you money. In this video, I'm going to show you how to safely delete Azure resources in a way that will ensure that you get all of the associated resources as well. Now, for some of my training, I try to give you an in-depth perspective on technology, but sometimes you just need to get the quick answer to the question, how do I do this? That's why I created this 10 minute training series. So let's jump over to Azure. And here I have a resource that we're no longer using. This was the original place that I hosted my blog and we use Azure Static Web Apps. Azure Static Web Apps, if you're not familiar, are a great place to host things because they can be free or even if they're not free, like for example, this is the free plan, but even if it's not free, it's like $9 a month to host a globally replicated site that is super fast no matter where you are in the globe. So great resource. But when I created this resource, I created it using a resource group called blog. And that's the key to making sure that you can delete everything associated with an Azure resource you create. So if you are creating new resources to try things out or test things, or maybe even to put something in production, there's going to be a time when you need to, need to remove it from production or you need to remove it off of Azure. And for some things, you'll have just one entry. For example, this static web app is only going to be just the one entry. But here's the key. If you create a resource that might need other resources, those resources will get created as well at the same time and you might miss it. So you might miss a, a storage um, element that gets created, or you might miss a database, or you might miss a even a network or something else that gets created because of the original thing you created. So when you create something in Azure, you give it a resource group. This resource group is something you should uniquely name for a given item or group items, preferably a single item. And the reason why is because of this little trick here. See, I could delete the static web app by saying delete right here. And it's going to say, are you sure? And I say, no, 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 I don't want to do that. Actually, I want to go over to the resource group called blog. I click on that and this tells me all of the resources in this resource group. So I can see I only have one resource in this resource group, but there's another thing you can do with a resource group. that's very, very powerful. By the way, resource groups are free, but what I can do is I can say delete resource group right up here. If I click this, what's going to happen is it's going to delete the blog and it's going to delete all dependent resources on the blog. So anything that depends is in this resource group or depends on something in this resource group that's connected. So when you create the blog uh, in the resource group, if it creates a storage account, well, that storage account would also be in the blog resource group. Therefore, both would get deleted. So now I can come down here. I type the resource group name, which I can just copy from up here. I come down here and paste it. That's blog. I hit delete and that's going to delete the resource group and its dependent resources. This is a permanent action. Okay. So with this one deletion, in this case, I'm deleting one resource. But in other cases, I might be deleting two, three, four, five resources. This is also why, though, I recommend that you use a different resource group name for every different resource you create. If you create, for example, a virtual machine, well, a virtual machine is going to require a few different things to in order to exist. Well, if you create it with a unique name for just that resource, you can delete that resource group. But if you create two different virtual machines in one resource group, well, you can't delete the resource group unless you're deleting both virtual machines. And if you don't delete both virtual machines, well, then you don't know if you can delete that one storage group or not. You don't know if that, that network can be deleted or not because they, those two might be dependent on the other thing. So by saying, hey, a resource group is just for one resource, well, then you can kind of group things together in a way that can be removed easily later on. So use resource groups. They're free. It's just a name essentially. But what it does, is it allows you to group elements together 
which will allow you to then delete just that group and get rid of everything, thus saving you time and money when it comes to removing resources you're no longer using. So this process will take a little bit. It, delete a resource group and everything in it takes a little bit of time, but at the end of it, what you'll find is that the blog is gone. There you go, resource not found, and that resource group as well will be deleted in a bit, and then we're good to go. So that's how you can save time and money in Azure and make sure you don't have any uh, orphaned resources out in Azure that are costing you money. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.